Right, hold on. What? Um, as the world's greatest YouTube guest, probably the most popular on the internet right now, I have a few demands before we start this little session today. As a, <laughs> as a new American. A new American? This is a new America, and I'm a new American. I have a few requests. First of all, you will respect my for pronouns, which happen to be manly man. So you will use those pronouns properly throughout the show. Second, this is very important. You will respect my gender fluidity throughout the course of the show. What is wrong with you? Third, oh, there's more. Don't worry, there's plenty more. This day that we're going to try to celebrate Independence Day will now be known as Oppression Day. And it's not happy oppression day. It's sad oppression day. Okay. And just those looks alone that you just gave me. I you feel like that used you, to this. you are you are showing microaggression toward me based upon your matriarchal reverse misogyny. I don't do micro anything. I'm just being full on aggressive. So I'm gonna need that to stop. And last but not least. We will not use the term God bless America throughout the show. Okay. We will now use the phrase, the gender neutral being or beings of your choice. Namaste. This patriarchal wasteland of male toxicity. Now, if we can agree on all those, we can do this show. Get out. Hi, welcome to another episode of Bethany Talks About Stuff. I'm your host, Bethany F. DeVores, author of the Seadrassian Chronicles, available from Amazon. And as is now becoming a tradition because somebody whined when they weren't included last year, we are doing our annual 4th of July special. So today I have with me Rick DeVores, my older brother, the law enforcement extraordinaire. Well, I don't know how else to introduce you. I you to use my pronouns. And I told you to get out with that man, nonsense. Man. It's a man, man. Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's always a joy to have Rick on the show. Yes, it is. So today, what we're going to do is talk about our favorite. We did our favorite patriotic movies mm -hmm. last time. So this time, we've picked out our fa top three favorite patriotic scenes or speeches from movies. Mine are amazing. I can't speak for hers. Well, I had to have him send me his list because I was pretty sure we were going to have some crossover and I would have been wrong. Uh, yes, because I have taste and you do not. Well, I, mine were way different. This is one of my many wardrobe changes that I'll be making today. You're welcome. He just shows up like this. I'm probably going to sing today, too. Mm -hmm. I'm done now. Oh, good. <laughs> That's good. So. Anyway, today we're going to talk about our top three most patriotic movie speeches, and I'm going to start with my list, and then we'll go to Rick's list. Yeah. So they are very different. So the first thing that came to my mind, surprisingly enough, was the president's speech in Independence Day. Good morning. In less than an hour... Aircraft from here will join others from around the world. And you will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Mankind, that word should have new meaning for all of us today. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interest. Perhaps fate that today is the 4th of July, and you will once again be fighting for our freedom, not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live, to exist, and should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday. 
But as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night, we will not vanish without a fight, we're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. How can you not love that scene, right? Um, sure. Yes. Hey, the president flew a jet. He fought himself. Uh, I don't think we'll see our current president doing that. Just saying. He so just, it's got that going for it. He was just fall trying to get in. <laughs> fall out of the side of the plane trying to get in. We're make up the little step. Him and Gerald Carter. Gerald Carter. Wasn't he the one who was always falling down? Gerald Ford? Yeah. Who was president before Jimmy Carter? You just combined two presidents. I was a kid. Okay. Go American. I just had a brain fart. Is that what you call them? It was a brain fart. I do know. I do know. There's a disease that's called CRS. You get it as you get older. Huh? Can't remember. You can figure out the last one. Okay, that's a thing. That's it a real a thing. thing. Yeah, I won't is. pretend like that's not happening. Memory is the second thing that goes. You can figure out the first. You're welcome. Okay, so my next speech was, it's actually a moment, uh, not really a speech. But when I was a kid, I actually went with you and your first wife. Do not blame this on me. To see Rocky IV when it was in the theaters. As a kid, y'all took me to see this. Do you remember that? Hmm. Probably not. I'm sorry, America. I did not know that this was going to this was going to be the thing that left an impact. I saw Rocky IV in the theaters her. with them, and I, I even as a kid, I thought that was just the best movie. <laughs> like I loved to go, America. And then my favorite part, though, is during the final fight with Draco. I will break you when the audience the crowd actually starts to cheer for rocky then the russians actually start to cheer for rocky that's awesome we're gonna watch this aren't we yes How do you not love that? You know what this gives me an opportunity to do to present some of my acting skills today. So one of the things that I do best is my impersonation of Sylvester Stallone as Rocky. Ready? Ready? You might want to put your coffee down because it's going to be a moment where... Adrian! Adrian! I get an Oscar for that. Is it coming out of my nose? Probably. <laughs> so my last one is actually the speech by Captain America in Captain America and the Winter Soldier, which you have not seen, correct? Yeah. No, I'm not sure. I've seen one Captain America and that was it, one too many. The first one. Probably. And that was the last one. This was one of the best Marvel movies in season, in phases one through four. I mean, Captain America and the Winter Soldier was a great movie. Like, even if you're not a comic book fan and you just know enough about who Captain America is to watch it, it's just, it's a really good movie. So Captain America and the Winter Soldier, to give a little, so that you understand this clip a little bit better, what's happening is um, S.H.I.E.L.D., has been infiltrated by Hydra. Hydra's the bad guys. They're like, you know, World War II, and Nazis. So S.H.I.E.L.D. is the good guys. S.H.I.E.L.D. has been the good guys that but were... they're bad guys? But they've been infiltrated by the bad guys. And they're getting ready to launch these ginormous, like, sky aircraft carriers that have the ability to kill anybody on Earth if they're suspected of being somebody they can't control, basically. 
So Captain America and his little crew have gone into S.H.I.E.L.D. to try to stop them from launching. And he goes on the intercom and gives a speech about why people who dr- genuinely are S.H.I.E.L.D. should stand up and so fight back. S.H.I.E.L.D. was good. Hydra was bad. Correct. But now S.H.I.E.L.D. is bad. Well, S.H.I.E.L.D. has been infiltrated by Hydra. So not everybody in S.H.I.E.L.D. is bad. And so Captain America, well, Steve Rogers. Washington. Yes, it is actually. <laughs> it's like a true story. It's been infiltrated. Uh, Steve Rogers is on the you know loudspeaker through the whole Who's organization, Captain America. Oh, I only know him as Captain America. And he, he wears a suit. He's trying to convince those people in Shield who are not Hydra to stand up against the people who are Hydra. Hmm. And so he makes this speech. So here's the speech. Attention, Attention all, all Shield agents. agents. This is Steve Rogers. You've heard a lot about me over the last few days. Some of you were even ordered to hunt me down. But I think it's time you know the truth. S.H.I.E.L.D. is not what we thought it was. It's been taken over by Hydra. Alexander Pierce is their leader. The Strike and Insight crew are Hydra as well. I don't know how many more, but I know they're in the building. They could be standing right next to you. They almost have what they want. Absolute Absolute control. control. They shot Nick Fury. And it won't end there. If you launch those helicarriers today, Hydra will be able to kill anyone that stands in their way. Unless we stop them. And I know I'm asking a lot. The price of freedom is high. It always has been. And it's a price I'm willing to pay. And if I'm the only one, then so be it. But I'm willing to bet I'm not. Did you write that down first? Or was it off the top of your head? To me, that's very American. You know what? That actually makes a wonderful segue and to my first clip about freedom not being free. I'm sorry. It looks Australian. It looks like you should be out hanging out. Do I look out. Australian? Do you see kangaroos floating around anywhere? No. This is America. This looks like it's been made out of kangaroo. That's right. That's what Americans do. We turn things into hats. Good day, mate. Two beers, all right? One for me. Me, Mike. My clips are truly inspiring and patriotic. Okay, well, this one might be a little cartoonish because it's actually marionettes and not cartoons or human beings. Just say what it is. It's the greatest American movie ever made with non-humans and non-cartoons. And it is? Yes. It's Team America. World Police. Don't forget that part. Well, you should have said it. And I can't say the rest of it because bleep, yeah. But that's not the actual title of the movie, though. That's my title. There's a song in this movie that expresses all that there is that needs to be expressed. And it goes along with your little Captain America speech. That's actually fair. That's fair. You're welcome. What would you do if you were asked to give up your dreams for freedom? What would you do? If asked to make the ultimate sacrifice Would you think about all them people Who gave up everything they had Would you think about all them war vets And would you start to feel bad Freedom isn't free It costs folks like you and me And if we don't all chip in We'll never pay that bill Freedom isn't free No, there's a hefty fee And if you don't throw in your buck five Who will? Ooh, buck five Freedom costs a buck five Freedom isn't free 
I find this both inspiring and sad at the same time. I'm going to sing now. No, you're not. I'm going to sing the no. last line of this song. No. I'm going to sing this song. Because I promised these people that the greatest YouTube star ever to be on your show would sing. Freedom cost buckle five. Or buckle ten, as my son would say, because of inflation. <laughs> Not wrong. Not wrong. Not wrong. All right, give us your number two. Can you guess which movie I chose? Pirates the of the Patriot. Caribbean? The Patriot. See, he used something similar to this to teach those red coats a thing or two. They're recruiting for the South Carolina militia. That's where we live, by the way. That's pretty where we live. Mm -hmm. Anyway. What's his name? What's the little kid that's no longer alive? Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger, that kid. He comes in there. He's the ghost son. He comes into the church. He gets this little spiel about their recruiting for the South Carolina militia. And then his little woman, who's soon to be his wife, gives a little speech. And then everybody stands up. And they go out, ready to fight. And as they're all departing the church, someone special departs as well. And that's what this clip is about. All right, here we go. Reverend? The shepherd must tend his flock, and at times, fight off the wolves. I like it. I'm not going to lie. I'm that kind of preacher. Pretty good. We need more like that. Sometimes Grab your you, guns, boys. Sometimes you got to fight off go the fight. wolves. Yep. Yes. <laughs> That's a real thing. So, all right. So that was your second one, right? That was my second one. Patriot. All right. Number three. Stripes, and the greatest American of all, Bill Murray. Now, I like Bill Murray, but let's not get crazy. Have you ever seen Zombieland? Who's Bill Murray? Hey, I've never hit a kid before. I mean, that's like asking who Gandhi is. So here's the clip from Stripes. We're all very different people. We're not Watusi. We're not Spartans. We're Americans with a capital A, huh? You know what that means, do you? That means that our forefathers were kicked out of every decent country in the world. We are the wretched refuse. We're the underdog. We're mutts. Here's proof. His nose is cold. But there's no animal that's more faithful, that's more loyal, more lovable than the mutt. Who saw Old Yeller? Who cried when Old Yeller got shot at the end? Nobody cried when Old Yeller got shot, I'm sure. I cried my eyes out. So we're all dog faces. We're all very, very different. But there is one thing that we all have in common. We were all stupid enough to enlist in the army. We're mutants. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Something seriously wrong with us. We're soldiers. But we're American soldiers. We've been kicking ass for 200 years. We're 10 and 1. Now, we don't have to worry about whether or not we've practiced. We don't have to worry about whether Captain Stillman wants to have us hung. All we have to do is to be the great American fighting soldier that is inside each one of us. Now do what I do and say what I say and make me proud. Fall in? Yeah! Okay, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Look, there's been stuff about Bill Murray out that was not super flattering, but... He lives here with us. He is a South Carolinian now. Is he really? He lives in Charleston. He owns the Charleston River Dogs. Oh, how about that? He's one of us. You know, I kind of remember hearing that now. 
Yeah, he's always showing up at places down there. Look, Bill Murray, whatever you think about him, is a comedic genius. Yes. That is one of the funniest humans to live. He is so funny. I used to love him on Saturday Night Saturday Night Live, you know, back when it used to be funny. That's a long time ago. It has been a long time. <laughs> but he was awesome. I used to love when he did the lounge singer. Ah, oh, Star Wars. <laughs> Nothing but Star Wars. Stripes is pretty funny. Stripes is actually you know pretty what funny. what we are? We're all mutts. Mutants, I think, is what he said. No, we're mutts first. Oh, yeah, because the cold mutants. nose. Our DNA proves that. We really are. We yeah, definitely. I did my ancestry DNA, and of course, we share parents. So, do we? Do I know you like that? <laughs> well, we go with it, and uh, we are definitely mutts. But we're like the whitest white mutts ever, though. I'm just saying. Not that that's good or bad. Just is what it is. I'm starting to feel triggered. A lot of Scottish, English, uh, Welsh, Scandinavian, our Viking heritage there. Norwegian. Specific. And every time I hear somebody say Norwegian, I think of that Beatles song Norwegian Wood. Isn't it good? Norwegian Wood. That's like a weird song. Monasteries and our people liberating them of precious golds and other metals that were on fire, maybe because they set the fires, but they were liberating and saving See, those that's things. That's why I actually think it's a shame that you never got into video games because. You would like Assassin's Creed Valhalla because a lot of that video game is actually raiding monasteries and setting them on fire and stealing stuff. Why do it on video when you can do it in real life? We are not propagating any kind of violence in real life. Not in this country. Anyway, whatever happens to England happens. Stop. I mean, that's what this whole thing's about. We beat them in one war. It's we actually beat them in two wars. In the 1700s. Well, twice. And we sent the Limeys packing. I'm just saying twice. You're talking about 1812? Yes. Most people don't even know about the War of 1812 anymore, I think. 1814 took a little trip. Remember that song? In 1814, we took a little trip along with Colonel Jackson down to mighty Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about that war. We I didn't mean, fire muskets till we saw the whites of the right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I got to do it because we Fired couldn't do our guns like. And a, the British Capricorn. All right, so I can't do Pew Pew America because I have to reload. So, Pew. <laughs> Pew America. <laughs> Who led that? Another South Carolinian, Andrew Jackson, general. We're then spicy. President. We're spicy in South Carolina. We just like to fight. <laughs> that tradition has lived on to today. Yes. Ah, so what, that was your third one, right? It was. So that's it. I'm borrowing this from Ricky because y'all, I finished Assassin's Creed oh, for Black Flag. Stop talking. Name. Just Manly stop. Man. Stop. I finished it and I'm going to be doing my review and I'm borrowing Ricky's hat to so do my pirate game review. I should have, I wanted to get this actually for um, Assassin's Creed 3. Should have mentioned that Assassin's Creed 3 takes place in America during the American Revolution. You struck me. That was therefore a microaggression. Stemming from your matriarch. I told you, I don't misogyny. do microaggressions. I do macroaggressions. How? Pew. <laughs> Pew. <laughs> Something wrong with you. Anyways, that's our list of <laughs> patriotic scenes from movies. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. Did you like these? Are these scenes that you like? And which ones did you like that we didn't mention? And... Really, that's that's it. 2023, July 4th, in the bag. Are you done? Yes. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe, all the stuff you should be doing on the internet. And until then. Um, happy Independence Day. Yes. Happy July 4th. And that's it for now.